So here I'm going to talk about distributions. A lot of times students studying statistics would like an example to kind of visualize what a distribution is statistically. So I do this in my Economics 346 and I do the a traditional coin toss example where you're flipping a coin and you can look at how many heads you get if you flip a coin a certain number of times. Right. So in order to get distributions you can kind of see what are the most likely outcomes. For example, if you flip a coin 10 times you'd expect 5 heads, but how many um, if you get four, for example, is that does that mean the coin isn't perfect? Or what about two out of ten or something like that? So you can actually figure out how many heads you're going to get. You can figure out the probabilities of each number of heads. Now, to do that, you have to review your permutations and combinations, which is something that I always do. Um, and you can do that in R a couple different ways. You can do it the hard way, which you use factorials. I remember permutations, um, that involves specific positions. And so there's going to be more ways. If you can arrange 1, 2, 3, or 3, 2, 1 as different ways, you're going to have more ways to arrange numbers. Combinations do not take that into account. So if you look at these formulas, the big difference is that combinations are fewer because you're dividing by this uh, factorial k. There's fewer combinations. So p uh, takes uh, permutations take position into account. Okay. Now you can also use a package called Commonat. I don't like it too much, uh, but you can have uh, that in your library and you can do permutations and combinations that way. But I like to practice using factorials. You get the same result, right? So I'm going to start. I'm going to talk about tossing a coin. So I'm going to make a thing, make an object called coin. It's got heads and tails, H and T. Now, if you want to show how many outcomes you're going to get, you can write it on a chalkboard. You could say, if you toss a coin twice, you could get HH, HT, TH, TT, or you can use expand.grid and you get the same result. All right, so these are the four outcomes for two coin tosses. Now, you could do four coin tosses and you could just do coin, 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 coin. You get the same thing, only there's 16 outcomes, two to the fourth power. But if you want to do 100, you want to keep typing coin, the way to do that is you can actually have a repeat. Make sure you separate coin into a list. Okay, so we're we'll talking a little bit about lists. And then n number of times. So if n is 4, you could do 4, you get the exact same result. But you could do this for 100 coin tosses or so forth. Eventually, you run out of computing power. Um, but you you won't you can actually use R to repeat this coin multiple times, right? So we got H's and T's. Now, how do you add all the H's? Um, basically, you have to turn them into true-false statements, and R will add up true-false statements where 1 is true and, and 0 is false, and so HHHT can become true-true-true-false, and that would sum to 3 because there's 3 trues, right? So I'm going to make toss B where it's all true-false statements. You see the last one, this is all tails. Um, it's all falses, and so that would sum to 0. If you do the row sums, you'd see here, right, and that's the 0, and then we started out with all heads, so there were 4 heads. And then these are different combinations of 3s and 2s, and eventually it trails up. Okay, so if we've got those as sums, how are we going to get the uh, proportion, right? So we're going to have 4 out of 16, for example. Um, you know, if something happens 4 times in a length 16, you can say it happens a fourth of the time. So I'm going to start out just setting k as 2. How many combinations are there with k equals 2 or 2 heads? Now to get the length, or excuse me, to get the number, we can say, well, which row sums equal k? All right, so we'll find out which one of these equal exactly 2. And then we can make L4, which is the length of that. And so there's going to be six outcomes. You can look at them here, right? But we're using R. You can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You can see six twos down there. But we know that you can use R to do it quicker. We found there's 6. And then 6 over 16 is 0.375. And that means that 37.5% of these outcomes are going to be 2. And you'd expect 2 to be the most likely, right? Because it's half, a 50-50 chance. Okay. Now, if you can do this for all real easily if you take table. All right, table is going to be like a summary table. And you can say, well, all the row sums, it's going to give you the count. And then dividing by the number of rows is going to give you the proportion. Right? So here you can see that there's 6.25% chance of getting zero heads or four heads because it's symmetric. And then most likely is 37.5. You could plot that out. You get kind of a hump. All right? But you can also do that with more numbers. Right? So this gives you all the possibilities. You don't need to really flip the coin. Now, R will flip the coin for you. We did that. All the outcomes. R will do a simulation. But you can just use the formulas as well. Right? So to do that, you use permutations and combinations. Don't forget, we're going to use list and unlist. All right? And so using perm n, which is part of that uh, combinat package, right? you can have, I call it perm1, permutation1 of four, and, and there's actually 24 ways to arrange it, all right? Um, and you can see that here, this is actually a list, each one is separate, and then you, the class will tell you it's a list. Now, if you want, you can take the length, all right, and just take the length of it as 24, so there's the 24 outcomes. Now, if you were to do this the old-fashioned way, remember this is four one at a time, so it's really uh, the k is one, and 
and so forth, it really turns out to be uh, just the pure factorial. 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is also 20, 24. All right. Now, if you did four things two at a time, right, you, you would have 4 factorial over 2 factorial 2 factorial. All right? um, or, excuse me, over just the 2. Right? For the permutation, you just have it 4 factorial over 2 factorial. You get the same um, result here. If you do 4 things 2 at a time, you get 12. Okay, and you could plot that out. Now, if you do a combination, there's going to be fewer, right? So four things one at a time, you get um, only one way to do it. Because one, two, three, four, two, one, three, four, they're all the same, right? Position doesn't matter. It's all the same. So there's only one way to get those four numbers. This, however, in, in the way the, the package works, it's actually not a, a list. It's, it's the matrix array, right? Now, the length is just one, so forth. Um, it's got four long, right? Um, it's a little bit different, right? Now... It's not going to give you the same result here because it puts out a different thing. So I just use the factorials, and you could say, well, four thing, one at a time, right, gives you four, right? Um, that's the way to do it here. Um, and then now, all right, four things, two at a time, right? You can do the same thing with combinations. You get six, or you can use the formula, and you get six, right? Now, in class, I did an extra example. I took the numbers one through six, and I said, how can you arrange the numbers one, two, three, four, five, six? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six is the first way, but then you could do two, one, three, four, five, six, all the ways through. You find out that if you run permutation, you get 720 ways to do it, but these are all in a list. So one way to uh, fix this and turn it into something that's more of a matrix is you can unlist it. All right, this actually gives you just an unbroken string of things. So then we have to separate it out. The way I did it in class was I set the dimensions to be basically 120 by six. All right, so, so it's gonna have six here, right? but here, this is, the, the trick here is that this is actually the rows. It's gonna have six rows and then 720, right? The length of the whole thing, right? Because it was all 720, but it was six times that divided back up, all right? so. If you, so I, so the idea is it's to be uh, six, the way I want it is six across, 720 down, all right? So the way I'm going to do that is I have to figure out, well, it's super long because it's six times 720 because it's got all those digits. I'm just going to divide th that out, all right? So this turns out to actually be six. And then if you take the long, long length divided by six, you get 720. So those are my dimensions, but it's going to be sideways. So then I transpose it. Okay, now that's how I did it, and you see here's the head. It starts with one, two, three, four, five, six, and it ends at the tail, and it, this is just a, the last way it does it, you know, the way it arranged it, right? So there's 720 ways. You could do it with factorial six, which is the formula, or six times four times three times two times one, same thing, you get 720. All right, you can do the same thing with six, thing, two at a time. You can, you can do other combinations, but this is what it looks like. It's different pairs. One, two, one, 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 excuse me, one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six, all the way down to five and six. All right, and remember, because it's combinations, you don't see six, five, because that's the same thing. It doesn't count those. There's fewer combinations and per permutations. How many, count, how many ways to do it? Uh, 15, all right? So now I'm back to my coin toss, okay? So this is what, what way you can do it in R, all right? And then remember, I do it the, the easy way is using an R formula. The medium way is using the R to, to grind out the formula you saw in stats class. All right, so remember, the probability of success, probability of heads is 0.5. Failure is 1 minus 0. 0.5. Sometimes it's called Q, so that's also 0. 0.5. Four tosses, and I say you get one heads in four tosses, so that's my K. Sometimes books call it R, so it's N and R. I use N and K. So this is the, the formula from your book. You can look it up. This is the N factorial, and this is K factorial, N minus K factorial. This is P uh, to the K power, Q to N minus K power. This is simply the way it's written out. Note the parentheses match. It'll work. Um, if you do it you get 0.25, all right? So for a quarter of the time, it's gonna be one heads, and that's what we saw up there, all right? Now, the easy way to do it is binome.test, and you, what you're testing here is one success in four trials, and we're saying, what are the likelihood of getting less than that, all right? And, and what you're gonna wind up with the, the test of, so you're, you're basically finding the probability is 0.4, and we saw here, all right, the p-value is 0.3125, and so if you know hypothesis testing, this means it's, uh, this is within the normal range of events, all right? So if you were flipping a coin and, and you're, you know, if you flip it four times and you get one head, there's nothing wrong with the coin. You think like, that's really rare. It's something's wrong with the coin. Maybe it's not fair. Maybe it's biased toward tails. That's kind of the, your hypothesis is like this coin is a, a real coin. Actually, there's no proof. The p-value tells you that this is a likely outcome, right? And, and it, if you flip a coin four times, it's 
25% chance you get one, right? It's not really rare. So that's what, what you use the distributions for, for testing. You find, you say, this is, is this rare or not? You use the p-value to tell you that. Now, what if you flip a coin four times, you get zero successes. I plug the numbers in with k is zero. Same formula as before, still 6% chance. So again, every once in a while, you're going to flip a quarter four times and get no heads. Nothing wrong with the coin. There's no proof. Now, if you flipped a coin a thousand times, a hundred times, and got zero, then something's weird. Okay, so I do it again. Four, four. All right. The alternative, same thing. It's symmetric. You get the same results for four heads as zero heads because it's you're kind of looking at zero tails at that point. It's symmetrical. Right. Now, one thing I want to do last is make a table. I'm going to have the probability distribution and the cumulative distribution function, and I'm going to do it for a hundred coin tosses, which I have in my notes. Okay, and I plot this. So. I'm going to do this as a loop. I start with a null table, and then for k0 to n, all the way, whatever n I put in, it could be 4. Well, now it's going to be 100. In class, I said 1,000, but it's really hard to compute. It's not going to happen. So I'm going to do 100, which is also what I have in my notes. And then I've got my probability, which is the same formula as before, but now I'm going to take my table. I'm going to bind it, right? And I'm going to take k and the probability, all right? So run it, all right? And I get... Um, Hang on here. All right now it worked. And then I'm going to take the cumulative sum, or which is the cumulative distribution here. All right. Now that is not going to have a name. I checked that earlier, and so I'm going to add cumulative probability. Here's my table. All right. And if I take the look at the top, it's it's actually really close to one really quick. All right. What happens here is it starts at zero, really low probability, and then it gets into kind of the middle range here, and you can start to see that the probabilities are growing. Um, and it's going to be like 0 0.07 or something like a 50, and it's cumulative growing. The plot will make it look a lot easier, but here's what every likelihood out of 100, you can see the probability is growing, and the cumulative is approaching 1, okay? So we're going to plot that. We're going to plot 1, which is the Ks, down here, and we're going to have the column 2, which is the PDF. You can see this is that, seven. I said 7%, right around here. These are all the likelihoods, and right around, somewhere around 30-ish, 40, 35, 40, you can see that the likelihood takes off. And really, there's no probability of getting zero or even 100 heads, right? Cumulative distribution, again, stays close to zero, and then it takes off, it approaches one right in the middle, somewhere between 40 and 60, okay? Now, that if you look at the distribution, it has a mean and a standard deviation. Mean is n times p, so it's 1,000 times a half or 500. You'd expect 500 heads on average. Standard deviation, the formula is square root of n times p times q. And so 100 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 is 25. Square root is 5. Standard deviation is 5. Okay, so we're going to plot this, but I'm going to put it as a line, and then I'm going to do it with uh, labels, and then I'm going to make it uh, uh, with some... Uh, uh, I'm going to add vertical lines for the plus or minus 2 standard deviations. So 50 plus or minus 10. All right, so you can see here, this is the cut, two standard deviation cutoff, all right? And that's, if you get something like 62 heads, then you get in the realm of, of improbable. If you get 38 heads, that would be improbable, all right? You're never going to see 20 heads out of 100, all right, or extremely rarely. So if you zoom into the middle, all right, this is between, I said a little 35 to 65, you could see here that this looks like a normal distribution because the binomial and other distributions approach normal as the sample size grows. Okay, so you got the average around 50, you got the plus or minus two standard deviations. So that's kind of the idea, all right? When, if you want to visualize a probability, you could think of how likely it is to get, a, you know, a coin to turn out a certain way, and people always picture that. And you could be gambling, you should you could be playing a game, and, and if you, you could have bad luck and get zero out of four. That's, no, that's just luck, that can happen. But if you got zero out of 100, you could say, hey, my hop hypothesis is this coin is weighted towards tails. And my evidence is that I have um, never gotten ahead, right? Zero heads, all right? And so then you would use statistical inference to say my hypothesis, I'm gonna, you know, I've got rejecting the null that something is going on, right? So visualizing the toy and cost. So, so we worked on um, all sorts of things. We had uh, looked at permutations, combinations, we used an R package, we used some new functions like expand.grid, um, looked at comparing the easy way and the hard, medium way to get the same results with the package versus the, code, the the standard formula from the book. And then we looked at the normal distribution based on a, a large sample binomial distribution.